Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for another video. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about a new addition to the Moray eel family. Um, I recently added a very rare Viper Moray eel and I was able to purchase another very rare Moray eel species and I actually was able to get two of them. So in this video, I'm going to show you what they are and uh, how they are going to fit into the overall family of Moray eels that I have. All right, so we are now in front of the 270 gallon aquarium that currently houses the Viper Moray eel from the last video. And this aquarium um, is six feet long, two feet front to back and three feet tall. And uh, yeah, let me give you a quick update on the Viper Moray. So I put him in, you know, when I got him about three weeks ago and he has not been eaten, been eating anything or swim around at all. So he's always in hiding, he's super shy, he's very reclusive and I'm beginning to understand why this eel is so rare in the wild and you know you barely ever see it in, in a pet store. So he, uh, the only footage I was able to capture from him was when I rescaped the aquarium and uh, you're, you're going to be seeing some b-roll now of that <laughs> so that you're not too bored and uh, um, also uh, when I was just working on my computer and I looked to the right, I, he happened to be out. So I just grabbed my cell phone and I uh, recorded some footage of him briefly swimming around. So unfortunately, um, this is a vertical video, but uh, you get the idea. And yeah, he's been just, you know, kind of a problem because um, he's been here for three weeks. Uh, he was at the store for four weeks. And then he was caught maybe a week before, so he hasn't eaten anything in eight weeks. And um, which is probably getting close to, you know, the point where you may need to worry. I know they can go on a hunger strike for months. But uh, yeah, so what did I try to uh, get him to eat? So I raised the temperature a little bit because the higher the temperature, you know, the faster the metabolism. So I was hoping that would spur his appetite. And I did put some mollies in this aquarium. They're currently hiding. There's one right there. Um, so I put five of them in there and uh, I'm counting them every day. And you know, they're, all of them are there. So he doesn't go after any fish and uh, he certainly doesn't come out you know, uh, to feed. So when I rescaped the tank, my idea was to uh, basically limit his hiding uh, spot to just one spot so I can actually target feed him uh, more easily so whenever he pokes out his head I can just you know point some food towards his nose but um, yeah that just simply wasn't working and um, I kind of stressed him out even more I believe so I just um, the last rescape what I did is now what you see here and this is what I'm going to uh, maintain so even if he continues to not eat um, it is what it is so um, but I had an idea which, uh, you know, I got, I had when I was browsing through eBay through some listings and, uh, my idea for that Mori, for that Viper Mori was that since he grows to about eight feet, uh, once he start eating and once he, I'm sure that he doesn't go after any live food, he would go into the 1000 gallon tank with the Tessalat and the giant Mori. But, um, and then when, when he's out of here, uh, I was going to get either a dragon moray eel or two golden banana moray eels. And uh, after, you know, deciding, uh, after, after going back and forth, uh, and I decided to just go with the banana moray eels because the dragon morays, they, the, the, the head and the teeth look very similar to the viper moray. So I wanted to have something different. And golden banana morays are very colorful, you know, very beautiful eels. So I thought, um, you know, that would be a better choice. And because they only grow to about two feet in the wild, so in captivity, they're actually um, smaller. Um, I can actually have two of them. So I think that will go really well. And uh, yeah, so as you may have seen now in the B-roll footage, the Viper moray is quite big. He's actually almost three feet. And... Um, you may know that you should never mix, you know, moray eels that are 
they're very different in size because of possible cannibalism. But the Viper Mori is very thin, uh, so I don't know, I don't think that he will be a threat to the Banana Moris when, once they arrive in a little bit and they will put him into the tank. So I'm confident that, uh, you know, there's not going to be any cannibalism since he's even eating, eating uh, you know, Molly, so anything. So, uh, and when, does, when he does, you know, uh, regain his appetite, he will most likely go after something small first. So the only problem I may face is aggression. So if that happens, I could put a divider in here. But uh, I'm actually hoping that uh, adding two banana mora eels in this tank will actually help the viper moray to get rid of some of his shyness and you know encourage him to eat, especially when he sees other moris eat. And it will also uh, prep him for uh, his move onto the 1,000 gallon tank because he will be used to being around other moray eels. So sometimes when you have aggression between eels, it's when you add a, an, a, an eel that has never been with any other eels, you know, into a eel community tank. So uh, I'm trying to um, avoid that becoming a problem. And uh, yeah, so let me now uh, give you an update once the eels have arrived. Uh, UPS is on its way and then we will do an unboxing and then we will do an acclimation. And then we will put them into the tank and then I can show you some cool close-ups of these beautiful banana mori eels. All right, so the UPS driver just dropped off the package and here we have the new mori eels. And uh, we are going to do the unboxing and hopefully everyone inside is doing well. Here we go. <sighs> And hard to see on camera, I will do a close up, but I can see an eel that is definitely alive. So that's good for the first one. And for the second one, oh yes, beautiful eel. So I'm going to start the acclimation process and then we will take a closer look at them. Now we are going to move on to the acclimation process and I'm basically just going to be using the box that they came in. And I'm also using a USB powered air stone, which is also great when you uh, travel and pick up an animal that you need to provide oxygen for because it cannot be kept in a small bag. So this is a great device to get. But yeah, let me start putting in these beautiful new eels. Here we see a better look. Very pretty. So we can now see a little bit better what these eels look like and they're absolutely beautiful. So I'm pretty excited. So this one is a little bit larger than this one and the color patterns a lot, a little bit different. Um, you know, this one has bigger chunks of black and this one has, you know, smaller ones, smaller kind of a net pattern, but both of them are banana eels and uh, yeah, they look pretty nice. So I'm going to start the acclimation process and uh, drip acclimate them. And uh, one thing that I also like to do is I also like to test the salinity of the water that they came in. So I have to be a little bit uh, careful now because there are more eels after all, but the salinity is 1.023. So the salinity in the aquarium they're going into is 1.022. So it won't take long to acclimate them, maybe like 30 minutes, and then uh, it will be time to put them in. All right, so the acclimation process is now completed. I just turned off the air pump, and here we can get a closer look at the eels. Very pretty eels. Um, both are banana eels, but the color pattern is different between the two. But uh, yeah, I'm happy 
nevertheless. So I'm going to be putting him into the tank now. And uh, because they're relatively small, I may be able to actually film this part as well. With the viper eel, I was not able to because uh, the teeth were just scaring me too much. But <laughs> uh, for these guys, um, I should be able to do it on camera. So let's see how that goes. And one is in the net. And he is now in the tank. And straight into hiding. Well, that's okay. Next one up. So this one is, I mean, not considerably smaller, but he is smaller, so, uh, but I think it will be fine. All right. Yeah, this one's a little bit more stress, but uh, that's, expected so i may have to turn off the light but uh and he's going straight into the area where the viper is so let's see but like i said earlier i don't think it's going to be a problem so and as soon as the viper moray starts to accept any kind of food uh which will obviously not be uh, an eel of this size um maybe the uh, what, what are they called, the mollies, but yeah, I don't think uh, there's going to be an issue. So once, he's, once the viper starts eating, the viper will be out of here, and then this will be the tank for the golden banana mori eels. All right, guys, so this is it for this video. We have one eel right in front of my finger settling into that area, and the other one back there a little bit hard to see but uh, yeah I think they're doing well and uh, yeah I just hope everything goes well with the Viper Moray that he will eventually start eating and uh, I will probably give it another two weeks or so and if he still doesn't eat then um, then I may have to take him out of this tank put him into a really sterile quarantine tank similar to what he had in a pet shop with just a PVC pipe for hiding and just wait until he becomes hungry and starts eating and uh, because otherwise uh, <laughs> I'm just a little bit worried that he may uh, you know just die slowly and uh, I'm not seeing him because he's always hidden away so uh, we definitely don't want that to happen and uh, yeah but these guys they are very active you know I, I may try to feed them later but uh, we'll see and uh, yeah, if there's any other update, in the meantime, I will let you know. But uh, thank you so much for watching this video. And this channel is uh, starting to have some exotic moray eels. So this is not your common zebra moray eel or your uh, snowflake eel. Nothing against those eels. They're pretty nice too. But I'm more into exotic eels. And um, this channel now having a giant moray eel, a viper moray eel two golden banana mori eels and a pretty nice tessalata eel so i hope i will be able to provide some uh, exciting content for you guys in the future all right thank you guys and i'll see you in the next one